Hey, everybody! Back for part two. Going through, looking through at any card that counts as a tutor, which means it has this nice little text that says, Search your library. Uh, last time, the video was a little long because I included all of the jank tutors, the ones that are like tutors for, for a specific card. Uh, site, they're all from the Planeswalker intro decks. Decided to cut those. We could skip over those. Still got 50 cards to go through in this video. So, I think in the future when I design a video series, I'm just going to like maybe scale it back. But because Commander is such a wide open format, you know, what I do like best green ramp spells, best blue ramp spells, best budget ramp spells, I can scale it back and I can go like, you know, top 10 of these. But for this, because I know all of us are playing like, such variant decks, and you want to have different types of tutors, I figured we'd just go through all of them. Actually, there's a few last time, and this time, I had not seen or remembered. Uh, just, you know, I knew, like, of course, the transmute mechanic. I knew the transmute mechanic existed, but there you was know, some other cool stuff that I was like, oh, man, that card. Like, there's one coming up that's, like, I think is really good reanimator tutor. So... We're going to hit all the cards. So I'm going to shut up and dive in. Uh, diving in right off the bat with Demir Houseguard. Uh, it's a 2-3 creature with fear. Uh, you can sacrifice creature to regenerate it, so you can kind of use it in a as a sack outlet uh, for an aristocrat style deck or any other deck that let the that, you know, graveyard creatures go into the graveyard matters. Um... Transmutes for a 4-drop. Uh, some of the other tutors are 4-drops. You know, you need a 4-drop. You pay 3 mana, you get, a, you get your 4-drop. So, next. Uh, another... Another, uh... Another Demir card. Another uh, Transmute. Uh, can't be blocked. Blue-black. Great for ninjas. I actually have a copy of this in my ninja deck. I can use it as an unblockable... I can... Attack with it because it's unblockable. In the declared after the declared blocker step, I can ninjutsu in a ninja, bounce the sucker back to my hand, transmute it for a different two drop. Yeah. Um, pretty much, you know, if you got five mana and you got this thing to be able to like, oh, I'll just get in there with a ninja, then I'll get my you know, thing that makes my ninja unblockable on my ninja. So I can just, you know, I got five mana, I'll transmute this away and get a counter spell and be like, eh, no. Uh, Demir Machinations. <sighs> oh, this is good. I love this. Uh, look at the top three cards. Target player's library. Move, move any number of those cards from the game and put uh, the rest back in any order. This being a cool thing because it's the anti-tutor tutor. A lot of your tutors were like, okay, I'm going to you know, look at my deck. I'm going to take this card, set it aside, shuffle up my deck, put this card back on top. So you can actually use this is like, oh, he's cast a tutor. I could transmute for a three drop, or I can just be like, get rid of that thing you tutored for. So it's a tutor, but it's also an anti-tutor, so this one's kind of cool. Um, I think if tutor spells become more popular in my local metagame, I think this card is definitely a card to pick up. Just to uh, have around to, to cancel those to, to counter tutor. Uh, Disciple of Deceit. Uh, two and a block for a 1-3 creature has Inspired. Inspired, it's a tricky mechanic to work with because you have to be able to untap the creature. So having things that uh, will let you tap it down to do other effects, such as Convoke. Uh, there's some um, artifacts, that you, you know, equipment artifacts you can put on it. will give it a tap ability. Enchantments that will give it a tap ability. That way you don't have to attack with it. You, you don't want to lose your 1-3. But in a game of Commander where somebody might not have something that can block it, you can just attack, get in there for one point of damage, untap it, discard an on-land card from your deck, and search for a card with the same convert mana cost. That. So basically, it's it's a free transmute. So, yeah, no, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd play this. Distant Memories. <sighs> This card, this card, you're never, go <sighs> a, 
any opponent may have you put that card into into your hand. If nobody like this is the whole kind of thing of like in a in a in a one on one game, you're you're never going to play this off. But if you are in a commander game and you're like I can take care of that problem for you, but I need a favor that I can cash in later in the game. This is a politics card. This is where you're like, either you got your buddy who you're looking at, it's like, well, clearly we're on a team and we're teamed up to each other, but we're not teammates. We're still opponents. But, you know, you're playing group. Like, like if me and Josh or any of the other members of the flock get into a commander game, I'm going to be like, hey, uh, bud, you yeah. are going to let me do this? He's like, oh yeah, you can put that in your hand. You either need to have somebody that's a really good friend in the game, which means you're clearly going to show that there's an alliance There's there's an alliance going on, or you're going to need somebody that's in an alliance with you that owes you a favor. It's kind of cool that if you have that capability, you can be like, ha I got my buddy here. He's going to help me out. I'm going to go pay for get whatever I want. But if you're not in that situation, yeah, you're just going to draw three cards. And I think at that point, you're kind of like, do I go get my best card? Or do I just get a good card that's good in this situation? Or do I just go get a, like a basic land and like look at everybody and have everybody go, ha, you, you know, kind of like, <laughs> yes, my distant memory. Are you guys actually going to let me have this card? <laughs> Are you going to let me have it? Are you going to let me have it? Can I have it? Can I have it? And then they're like, no, don't give it to him. Don't give it to him. And then you draw three cards. And then you're like, ha, ah, it was a basic let. Ugh. Dizzy spell, another transmute spell. This one just, you know, one blue, blue, and go get a one drop. Uh, Duro's with eyes open. No, wait, this is Juro. Because the D is silent, like the Django. This is, so this is Juro with eyes open. Uh, when he enters the... Battlefield, may search your library for a plans marker card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Five drop creature with an ETB to go get a planeswalker. <sighs> I mean, it's cool. Uh, you know, you search the library, get your planeswalker, put it in your hand. Everybody else is like, okay, we got to keep a counter spell or removal spell or something here. Uh, the fact that you get a 4 3 with vigilance, so you can beat. If a source deal damage to a planeswalker, you control, prevent one of that damage. So they can't ping your planeswalker. Or if they try to, you know, damage route, they're going to be. I think it's cool, especially if you have a lot of blink effects where you can be like, it's going to be like, I'll get this out and then I'll blink it and I'll go get my other planeswalker. Um, especially if you're in a deck where you're built to use flash, I would almost be like, flash this out on my opponent's end step, uh, get my planeswalker, cast my planeswalker on my turn. If you're really going shenanigans wise, where you got a lot of mana, you can untap during other player's turns and you can really play that field. You're just like, end of your turn, flash out, Jiro, go get my planeswalker, your turn, flash out my planeswalker. Uh, have some sort of ability where you can activate that Planeswalker's loyalty. Um, I'm looking at you, Teferi. Uh, I know that one of your emblems does that. Um, yeah, or uh, I think Chain Bell does it too. Or does it just give you an extra activation? I don't know. There's there's ways. You, I, I would definitely like flash this out on an opponent's turn, get the Planeswalker to my hand, Drop it on my turn. Blink. Uh, have an effect where I can blink him on the on another end step. Be able to tutor up another one. Drop another planeswalker. Like he could be, he could be a key card in a super friends deck. Tutoring up those planeswalkers. All right, Doomsday. Some people will say this is not a tutor spell. Uh, but basically, because you cast Doomsday, you only have five cards left in your deck. <sighs> Doomsday is basically, I go search my library and my graveyard, I stack my deck in a, such a way that I basically am going to sequence off, uh, you're going to see every single one of those five cards work, and I'm going to win the game. Like, that is, that is a tutor to the perfect deck, 
that you're just going to go into. Like, it's not actually, you know, people say it's not a tutor spell, but it is a tutor to win the game spell. Uh, seriously, Doomsday, pretty good. Dragonstorm, another tutor to win the game spell. Uh, basically, if you're ramping up and you know casting all of your mat, all of your mana stuff, and you're you know you're chaining uh, rituals into each other, you're gonna be able to be like, look at all of these dragons I have. Look at all of them that have haste. Look at them that all have ETB triggers. Look at all of them that have. I get an extra attack step. Uh, triggers. Yeah, it's a tutor effect. I mean, you can just cast it, get the dragon into the battlefield, or you can just cast it with a storm count of, like, you know, 10, and just be like, it's a 10! And you're like, they're dead. So, it's a tutor to win the game spell. Um, I'm gonna keep the tutor to win the game spells in here, just because it's like, listen, you should be working up to, like, like, those are the cards you're going to want to tutor into. Uh, Drift of Phantasms, just just another transmuter. Uh, Dwarven Recruiter. There's a bunch of these in here that are going to be tutor for specific creature types. Uh, if you're playing a tribal EDH deck, uh, these are going to be bread and butter staples in your deck. Uh, Dwarven Recruiter, you know, he lets you come into play, search your library for any number of dwarves. You know, shuffle your deck, then slap those dwarves on top. So you're drawing dwarf after dwarf after dwarf after dwarf after dwarf. After dwarf. Uh, especially if you have ways to flip over your you know, top card of your library, play the top card uh, of your library like future site. Uh, there's a few green creatures that let you do that. That's why the elf one's pretty powerful. Um, there's ones the the goblin version of this. Actually, I'll talk about that one later because that one has a combo. But basically, you can just, you know, you can stack your deck. I would not be crazy and just make it just dwarf, 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 and just put every dwarf on top. I would just, I would probably use this, think about how many draws effects you have to be able to reliably put, because you don't have the crazy flip over top four cards show. I don't think there's a dwarf that does that. I know there's an elf. I know there's a goblin. Let's see the flip over the top four cards and put all that creature type in your hand. So basically, when you're playing with the ones that don't have a one, a creature that lets you do that, think about how many draw active, uh, how many draw abilities you have, how much card advantage you can actually pull off of the top of your deck, um, and think about how deep you can draw of worth of cards in one turn to make this actually pretty good. Like this, and then setting up a uh, wheel effect where you discard your hand and draw seven cards. Putting seven dwarves right on top that you're just going to be like, I'm going to pitch these junk cards, get my seven dwarves that I took before, drop my seven dwarves, and go aggro. That's, you want to think about it. You don't want to get everything. Uh, area possession, search your library for arcane card, uh, reveal that card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Just, you know, there is an arcane mana ritual. There's a bunch of different other arcane spells that work in Storm. So you can chain off with different arcane abilities. Uh, so yes, in Storm, in a dedicated arcane deck where you're splicing stuff onto arcane, splicing an arcane spell onto an arcane spell, and just kind of getting all these big triggers. Yeah, I, it's it's you do you go get the the splice spell, and call it good. Uh, Eladra Eladra Mus call. I know. I'm an English major. Uh, I speak English, not made up English. So, uh, Lodgemir's Call, green and white. Instant speed. Search your library for a creature card. Reveal it, put it in your hand. Then shuffle your library. Really good green-white tutor spell. You know, you cast it on your turn if you've got the mana to cast the creature. Or you cast it on your opponent's end step because it's an instant. And then you're like, I'll go searching. And then <clears throat> cast it without having to worry. Uh, Eldritch Evolution. Uh, so there's a cost to cast it. You sacrifice a creature. Uh, search your library for a creature card for convert mana cost. X allows for X is two is two plus the sacrifice because creature. This is basically a one shot birthing pod, and those are fine. You just want to be like, I want to upgrade this junk creature into a good creature. Uh, 
The fact that it lets you go from a token to a good two drop that might be a utility two drop. I'm thinking uh, get rid of a token to go get a uh, collector roof to shut down a token's opponent. I'm thinking any any zero drop token to go get some sort of hate bear. You know, those are the ones that are cost two mana and basically shut down a line of play. That's pretty cool for that. Uh, then basically being like, oh yeah, I got this. I got this card, but if I had, I could just tutor it away and get, you know, my bomb piece that I need on the board. So, yeah, and I love the whole fact that it's like the the tendrils coming out of the creature's face and stuff. It's the Eldrazi. It's been infected from the color from space. Ah, right, this is the Elvish Harbinger. Search about the search the library for an elf card. Vilp, shuffle, put it on top. Uh, yeah. Just a mana ramping elf that uh, goes and gets you uh, another good elf. Maybe an elf lord. Maybe the elf that lets you reveal the top of cards in your library and show and you know get that look at the top four. Put all elves into your hand or whatever key situational elf you need at the moment. And six round to make more mana. Yeah, it's an elf tutor. Tutors for elves. Are you playing elves? Yeah, you're playing this. Elvish Reclaimer! Okay, I left, you know, in order to shorten up time, shorten up the video and everything like that, I did leave off the sacrifice, land, you know, the sacrifice to go get a basic land. Um, this is designed to tutor for your uh, utility lands, your Fields of the Dead, your, oh, if you're playing, uh, you have an Eldrazi Tron in, in Commander and you need one of the certain Eldrazi lands, you can sacrifice a force and go get, you know, Urza's Mine, Power Plant, Tower, whatever you need. Uh, Glacial Chasms if you're playing the Lands Lands deck. Uh, basically any sort of, like, utility land that you need. You just pop off a force and go get it. You go get what you need. Uh, enduring Ideal. Uh, the Enduring spells are, are staying on this list. Um, they are what's called the Epic Spells. Uh, it was Magic's way of kind of like copying tenth, you know, tenth plus level spellcasting from D and D, where you did this one epic thing, but because it was so, so powerful, you could only keep doing that one epically powerful thing. Uh, so these are the epic spells. This one lets you search a library for an enchantment and put it into the into play, then shuffle your library. Um, I was toying with the idea of actually putting a copy of this in curses. And then basically getting a, having an O-ring, I'm an Oblivion Ring in it. So what I would do is I would Enduring Ideal to get a curse. And then have the one that gets me more curses. So I'm basically putting two curses a play. You know, on their upkeep, they're getting an extra curse. And on my upkeep, they're getting an extra curse. And it just gets all the curses out of my deck. The fact that I can't react uh, with this out... Um, Actually, wait, no, I can't orient it. Um, for the rest of the game, I can't do anything with that. Oh. Uh, yeah, no, that's my, actually my... That, that's right there, because I can't do anything after that. It's just setting it up. Like, I could... Theoretically, if my deck had... Um, oh, what is it? It's the... Wheel of Sun and Moon, if it actually could have green in it, if it was in, you know, five color, if I was making five color curses and I had Enduring Ideal out, so way my graveyard would always go to my, you know, go on the bottom of my library, then I would play this, and I'd just be like, alright, I'm 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 set up, I've got all, you gotta pay so much mana in order to get past me, uh, you know, I've got multiple upkeeps because I'm playing Paradox Haze, I'm getting two enchantments a turn, which is letting me pillow fort. Um, then getting all the curses, and then if anything goes away, everything goes back in. I got the enchantment that gives all my enchantments hex per. It can be done, but it's a lot of hoops to jump through. Uh, I'd actually call this junk and move on. Enlightened tutor. This is what you want to be using to you know get your enchantments and your artifacts. Best, 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 best in artifact or enchantment based deck. You want an enlightened tutor in it. Um, 
I can't say anything else. This is actually one of the this is one of the tier one tutors in Commander. Um, if you don't know how good this card is, you've never played with it or never played against it. It's good. It's good, 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 good. And Tomb. Again, uh, so I'll leave the great, like, <sighs> and Tomb is just, you know, when you're playing a graveyard deck, when you are basically, you know, self-milling with Dredge, or you're a reanimator deck, or, you know, I don't know why else you'd be playing in the graveyard, but if you're a self, if you're a self mill or a reanimator, chances are you're both. Um, just being able to be like, all right, uh, I've got the reanimation spell in my hand. Uh, time to go get my reanimation target, put it in the graveyard, and bring her back. And the fact that you can do this on instant speed at the end of your opponent's turn, you don't have to worry about them uh, cracking off. Uh, you can play around whether or not they're going to have something like you know some people play artifact based graveyard hate some people play just play a copy of Bujuka Bog if it and they call it good but being able to just end of your turn entomb this drop my reanimation spell and you know, start start making your day horrible it is perfect uh, eternal damn Eternal Domination. This this is actually the good version of it. Uh, search your opponent's library for an artifact, creature, enchantment, or land. So anything that isn't instant or sorcery or planeswalker. Just search their deck. Take the best card out of their deck. Yoink. Just take the best card. Just take the best per best non planeswalker permanent out of their deck. Uh, find a way to give yourself an extra upkeep. And look at you, Paradox Haze, and you could actually, yeah, you could play the yoink 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 yoink. I take all of your stuff. Um. Yeah. I, I would build it for fun. I wouldn't build it for competitively, but I would just build it as like this annoying deck that nobody wants to play. Especially if I was playing like a total prison deck where I was just locking down where they, it's like you, can't, you can only untap one land or you can only untap one creature. Yeah, you gotta sacrifice permanence. Um Yeah, no, I would I would I would I would play this like there was no tomorrow. Because um, it's the whole fact of, even if you got the whole thing of like, say you smoke stack and everybody sacked everything and you're still like, oh, I'm just going to go search your deck and get the best thing. That kind of lockdown deck, I would totally play this. Uh, Theory Usher. Uh, target creature's unblockable. Another one I think I had in my ninja deck. You know, just go get yourself a six uh, a six drop with transmute, make things unblockable. GG. Exposition map another one of the search for any utility land cards. Um, again, if you're playing, it's kind of like the only way to really play Urza's Tron in Commander to have the Tron lands have be affected is to have a bunch of these kind of effects where you can, you know, sacrifice something, go get the key land you need. Um, if you're playing Mind Slaver, you play one of these because you need to get to Academy Ruins. Uh, all those cool things. Fabricate. Speaking of uh, Mind Slaver, here's a way. It's the poor, cheap. It's the poor man's version of how to get it. You just kind of like, you know, you pop off something, you search your deck, you get your Mind Slaver, you hope nobody has discard or counter spell, and call it good. Uh, fairy Hammer, search library for a fairy card. Yep, just uh, Flying Flash. Four drop lets you go get any other fairy you need out of your fairy deck. Moving along. Fauna Shaman. Fauna Shaman. It's... Yeah, it's instant speed. Pay a green, discard a card. So basically you're turning any card in your hand uh, into almost a worldly tutor, but instead of it going onto the top of your deck, it comes in your hands. So it's even better. Um, so, yeah, kind of a uh, worldly tutor on a shtick. Pretty good. Uh, Fierce Empath. 
Enter the battle from a search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost six or greater. Reveal it, put it in your hand, and then shuffle the library. It's a three drop that tutors up Eldrazi's. Sure, you could play it in an elf deck and go get some of your, like, well, you know, get your Crater Hoof Behemoth. Well, yeah, you should play this in an elf deck and go get your Crater Hoof Behemoth. Because you got that elf we just went past that let you go get this guy. Let's go get your Crater Hoof Behemoth. You're going to have a good day. Or get your Emrakul or any of your other big nasty Eldraws. You're going to be playing. Oh, ah, Commander, can't play a. <laughs> can't well, you can't play that Emrakul, but you can play the other Emrakul. So, final parting. Okay, I said earlier I was going to talk about a uh, tutor for reanimator decks. This is the card. Uh, you search your library for two for two cards. Any two cards. Put one into your hand, the other into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Basically, this is I go get my reanimation spell and my reanimation target for five mana. Um... Chances are, in, unless you're playing a dedicated black, you're probably going to be black blue, pros, definitely black green. I would always play a reanimator deck, a self mill reanimator deck as black green. That way you can be like, I'll go get these two things and fill my graveyard and get my big, my big fat, fat natty, nasty. Um, especially if you have. Uh, if you're actually going to cast the spell Reanimate, which only costs you, uh, I think... Is Reanimate one in a block or two in a block? Add eh, Commander. You should have five or six. You should, if you got five mana, you should have seven mana. So you can be able to be like, Aha! Creatures in my graveyard. Re two drop Reanimation spell. Haha! -ha, creature is attacking you. Because all the good ones give me haste. <laughs> Looking at you, Garo's Vengeance. Yeah, Goro's Vengeance to give it haste and bring it back with it. So I'm sorry, Big Eldrazi Spaghetti Monster just attacked you. Final Devastation! Speaking of Big Eldrazi Monsters attacking you... <sighs> this is a uh, Green Sun Zenith with Upside. Uh, search your library or graveyard for a creature card with a cost X or less. Uh, put it onto the battlefield. If you pay 10 mana, if, if X is 10 or more, so if you're getting a big nasty Eldrazi, it will come in with X, X, plus one, plus one counters and haste. Uh, and, oh, it's library and graveyard, which means our other card could get us this card. But we'd have to wait a turn. Because uh, we need all that mana. No, I would I would play this. Uh, I would even play this just to go get a Dryad Arbor, because Dryad Arbor is a zero cost green creature that's also a forest. You can just pay two, cast this, and use it as a ramp spell. Uh, or you can you know pay seventeen and use it as a finisher. Uh, Fire Mouse Foresight again. This is a uh, I know last time I talked a lot about Storm uh, Tutor spells. This is the Storm Tutor spell. You basically you search your library for something with a casting cost of three, two, and one. Pretty much, that's going to be <sighs> manner. Uh, it's gonna be a ramp spell, ramp spell. Maybe a tutor spell. Maybe a finisher. Maybe more ramp. Possibly. Yeah. Anyways, this is gonna be that thing where you're gonna like you're gonna cast this. You're gonna somehow cheat that five down, down to. What can we cheat that down to? We can cheat that down to. Oh, the red medallion, the ruby medallion, the sapphire medallion. We'll take care of two mana. Bring that to a three. Bring the five to a three. Brow will bring it down to a two, and a goblin will bring that down to yeah, four. Well, if you got all four of those in the play, you can pay this for three. Get the mana you invested back out of it with the one, two, one and two drop, and then use the three drop as some sort of draw spell. You're still probably playing off of the mana you got off of these. And... That you can. This is clearly winnable. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, next. Yeah, if you're playing that, in the, uh, another, you know, if it says Harbinger, it usually means go get any one of its creature type. Let's you go get any elemental card, elemental decks. Um, the core twenty had the Omnath. It's a great commander for an elemental deck. So if you're building an elemental tribal commander deck, grab one of these. A uh, flesh witherer, just a uh, three three for four mana that lets you transfigure that tr to basically go get any crappy four drop to other tutor spell. Or um. Oh, wait, what's the, uh... Oh, Tendrils of Agony, the Storm Deck. So the Storm Deck wants one of these. This can go get your Tendrils and kill your opponent. Uh, Forerunner of the Coalition. Basically a human pirate. This one lets you, you know, tutor up a pirate. And then anytime another pirate enters the battlefield under control, every one of your opponent loses one life. This is actually pretty good. Again, playing the Pirate Tribal Deck, you want a copy of this. Uh, this one is for dinosaurs, and it will deal one damage to each creature. Uh, this one is for merfolk, and you get a plus one plus one counter on this whenever a merfolk enters the battlefield. This one is for vampires, and when a vampire enters the battlefield, control target creature you control gets plus one plus one until your turn. So, vampire tribal from beyond. Good HP Lovecraft reference. Uh, this is Eldrazi. Oh, it's Awakening Zone with upside because it doesn't make 0 1 uh, spawn tokens. It makes 1 1 scion tokens. They still sacrifice to give you 1 mana. Then you can pay 1 in the green, sacrifice this to search your library for an Eldrazi, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. If you're ramping into green Eldrazis, Guess what? You're playing this card. Uh, Adrazi EDH ramp. Gamble. All right, this is the tier one red tutor spell. Now, I can't say enough about how good this is in red because you search your library for any card. It's on par with the them it's on par with demonic tutor granted not demonic tutor. yes demonic tutor but it costs the same as vampiric tutor which means if it just let you search your deck for any card this is more powerful than any black tutor spell the downside is that red can't have make life easy for anybody. You can't make red. Red can't make life easy for your opponent because of all how fast it is with an aggro deck and how much under pressure they're going to be because you're in red. But also, red can't make red easy for people who use red magic. Because once you've tutored up the card you need, you basically gotta shuffle your hand, spread it out on the table. Look at your opponent and go, pick a card, pick a card, any card. <laughs> now, the chances are they're probably going to pick, someone might pick up a die and they're like, I'll randomly roll it. Oh, one, two, three, four. Okay, we'll get rid of this one. And you're like, you look at it, you're like, oh. that's the gamble. Uh, I'd still play it. The more cards you have in your hand when you play gamble, the better off you are. Um, honestly, if you pay red mana, and you cast Gable, you tutor up the card you needed. That card wasn't in your hand to begin with. So what the heck's the difference? All you did was basically spend a red mana to make to, to, to take a chance and hopefully get what you need. Um, long time I would I would I would avoid these kind of things where it's like search your deck. Get the card you need, put it in your hand, shuffle everything up, randomly discard a card. It scared me. Because I'm like, what if they take the card? What if they take the card and just go? What happens then? It's like, so they took the card you, you didn't have in your hand to begin with. Play the rest of the game out. 
So, yeah, I'm telling everybody, take some gambles. Gamble. Just uh, hedge your bets. Raise the odds of them picking something else. Do it when you've got a, a good size grip. And may the force be with you. Grook, color beast. All right. Uh, when you use his ultimate and get that seven, which would be four. So turn it comes in at five, six. So one, two, three. You're going to have to wait three turns uh, in order to pop that off. Unless you're playing like a doubling season or something that will let you put more counters on it. But whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a creature card, put it onto the battlefield to shuffle your library. That's nuts! You could get, like, your Crater Hoof just by casting a Land of War Elf. And all you gotta do is be able to protect this thing. And if you're playing an Elf deck, chances are you've got enough blockers to, to stand in the front of Grook and go, We will not let you pass. So, yeah, why aren't you playing this one? Like, this one's good. This is good. I would, I could see people playing this. Alright, the Veil Cursed is you have to sacrifice... Uh, this is the other side of the Flip Grook. Um, can't remember what the name of that one is. Should have made sure to write it down. Didn't do better next time. So, sacrifice a creature. If you do, search your library for a creature card. Veil, put it in your hand. And shuffle your library. It's, it's not as good as the other Grook, where you're just like, ah, oh, the creature comes into play, and I get a creature. This one, but still, you can sacrifice off some tokens. You know, it gives you 1-1 one, one Black Wolf tokens with that touch you can sacrifice off in order to tutor stuff up. Chances are, if they don't have a counter spell, or if they're stupid and they forget, and they don't keep a counter spell open for you, and the shields come down, then... Yeah, you're going to have some fun. Plus, there's some ways in green where basically you can make it so your opponent can't counter your spells and be able to get that big fatty in. So you want to add some of those as backup. Uh, General Tazri. Uh, as the general enters the battlefield, you may search the library for an ally. Creature card. Reveal it. Put it in your hand and shuffle your library. Pay the full Warburg. That's white, blue, black, red, green. And ally creatures you control get plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of colors among those creatures. Basically, this is the ally commander. Your job is to play her, tutor up whatever ally you need that's going to help you win the game uh, when you play it the next turn. And then you're like, I tap off five mana. I've got one ally of all I've got one ally in play that is each color. All my allies get plus five, plus five, and you valiantly charge to victory. Because chances are you're tutoring up the green one that gives them all, you know, trample. Yeah, allies. It was kind of like weird slivers. That only worked on ETB. Uh, giant Herbiger. Again, I said Her Harbingers. Just basically, you go get the... It's basically a second copy of the best of that creature type in your deck. Or lets you get the one you need in the certain situation. Gifts Ungiven! <laughs> uh, gifts Ungiven. So I play Gift Storm in Modern. Um, this is another I win the game doesn't matter what you give me. Trust me, it's going to happen. Spells. You know, the fact that you get to tutor... Like, you can actually play this in an Esper Reanimator, Esper Reanimator deck. What you do is you tutor... Because it says up to four copies. You can just tutor for two copies, and they go right in your graveyard. I get some given for Unburial Rites, plus the creature you want to reanimate with it. So you just give some given on the, on the turn before it's your turn. Go get the two pieces you need. Your turn. Cast the Umbera rights. Bring back your creature. Guess what? You have just completely nerfed uh, a battle. Like sometimes in those Esper decks, you can you can get like the key situational creature that's going to affect the board that you need. 
in that moment. Um, a lot of people have seen gifts for the um, the Unbearable gift deck. Used to be like, go get Elish Norn, go get Sun Titan. Um, yeah, there's 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 there. You can do stuff with this. You can do stuff with this. Uh, or you can just go get, like, four things that are all basically the same. Like, uh, if you're playing some sort of blue deck that's got... Let's say you got... Actually, let's say you've got... You're playing uh, Emery, Lurker of the Law. <coughs> you're playing Emery, and... Uh, you know, Emery is untapped. You gifts ungiven for four artifacts. And it doesn't matter. You're going to cast three of those artifacts as soon as you tap Emery. Because you're going to go, okay, which which two are you going to give me? Okay, you're clearly not going to give me these two. Okay, it's going to go this way. So you can, you can, as long as you got ways to interact with the graveyard, with how these cards go, you know, the cards that go to the graveyard, um, you're, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Like, you can... Yeah, you, you need to be, like, Gifts is a powerful card. Um, even if you have four cards in your deck that all basically do the same thing, uh, say ones like the the best of one color that does a certain thing, like let's say you are playing uh, an Esper deck and you need to wrath the board, you can be like, all right, I'm going to tutor for a... Uh, I'm going to tutor for a Damnation, a Wrath of God, a Day of Judgment, and a Magister Sphinx. And it might be the whole fact that they'll be like, we'll give you the Day of Judgment and the Magister Sphinx, because those allow regenerations. Um, Oh, you're better off just being like, oh, I'll get Magister Sphinx and I'll get, uh, <laughs> I'll get my, uh, <sighs> on how, you know, the, yeah, the Unhallowed Burial or what was that card again? I can't remember. Anyways, it's the flashback for Animator Spell. But yeah, going to get, going to get cards that have just two cards with flashback or, you know, if you're playing the Storm deck, getting the Pass in Flames so you can light everything on fire no matter if you're casting it from your... Because they almost need to put it in your graveyard at that point. Because they don't put it in your graveyard. You're going to cast the thing twice. You're going to be like, I'm going to cast this and I'm going to go off. <laughs> Alright. Goblin Engineer. Oh, enters the battlefield. Search your library for an artifact card. Put it in your graveyard. Then shuffle your library. Sacrifice an artifact. Turn target artifact. Career to make cost. Three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Won't go and get you a batter skull, but she'll get you just about anything else you need. Unless you actually get a goblin welder in play and ready to activate it. Because then you can just be like, I'll go get this. Drop it into play. Activate my goblin welder. My slaver locks for everybody. Oh yeah, no, if you got a way, like, it, it almost makes you want to go and get a three or less one. But if you have other ways of getting that artifact back, yeah, you can go get something. You can go get the good stuff. Remember, part of the power of tutors is how you design your deck and design it so that way even their drawbacks become advantages. Like gamble in a madness deck when the key card you need has madness. Yeah. Goblin Matron. Okay, now we're getting into the whole like search just for one key goblin in your entire deck. So this would be like, oh. Go get a uh, goblin ringleader. Uh, oh, goblin recruiter. Because ringleaders want flips four. So you matron for the one of those two. Stack four on top of your deck. Ha stack five on top of the deck. Have the top one is. So you draw that one. Cast it. Flip the top four cards of your deck. They're all goblins. They all go into your hands. It's goblin time. Like if you, or if you need a certain utility goblin that has a special effect, like the the goblin engineer and the goblin uh, welder. You, know, you want to have extra copies of that in your deck, matron, mama goblin. She's a mom. Oh, goblin recruiter! Ha <laughs> ha! Searching up for any number of goblin cards. Reveal those cards. Yeah, Sue. So 
if you're doing a goblin tribal deck, you matron into recruiter, and then it's the ringleader is going to be one of the five that you put on top of your deck, and you just die. Blah! Goblins. Especially you got the ways to make the goblins all cost less, so you're spending less mana, you just vomit. Like, you could, you could matron, draw the recruiter, drop the recruiter, cast everything, all have haste, all go upside your opponent. All getting like plus two, you know, plus one heat for this, plus two for that, plus one for every other goblin in play. Like, it gets nasty. Nasty. Uh, Gogo, Bandit Warlord. I uh, know. Try to do the pronunciations with an accent. That way they'll sound better. I say the first name, so I shouldn't do the other ones because it just sounds mean. Sorry if anybody's offended. I'm just trying to be able to pronounce this part right. But my brain read the whole thing. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card, put it into the battlefield. If you do, it's shuffle your library. And wherever he attacks for the first time each turn, untap it, and all samurai control. There's an additional phase after this combat phase. Ooh! Yeah, I got one of these in the cube. Uh, the Boros deck really wants to be a Boros you know, uh, equipment deck. The fact that you get to you know, get an equipment for free, and then uh, extra attack steps. So what you need is so basically you're going, you're getting your biggest, bestest weapon, dropping it onto the battlefield, and then you're gonna have probably the pure seal paladin, so you can quit for zero. So it's like ha, Goro, Goro gets the sword. Pure Seal Paladin picks it up, for, holds it up for him while he's charging across the field. And then, you know, he's a barbarian, so, you know, you don't have any samurai, but you might try putting some samurai in that deck just to round that thing out. Or you might put some uh, changelings, so that way the changelings get on top. Yeah. You can try some stuff. Uh, Golos, Tireless Pil Pilgrim. Again, this is search your library for any land. Uh, we all have heard the stories from Standard about this plus Field of the Dead. Um, this plus Field of the Dead plus Blink Effects. This as the commander for a Maze's End deck. Yeah. I would, uh, I would play him as the commander in a Maze's End deck. Just to be able to like tutor up exactly whichever land I need put it into play and just have fun. Oh, Green Sun Zenith. I talked about this earlier on. Um, yeah. Uh, let's you go and get any, cheat any creature, any green creature into play. Again, if you pay this for one, if you just pay it for one green mana, X is zero, you can go get a Dryad Arbor, use it as a ramp spell. Uh, the rest of the time, you're probably going to tap some elves, tap some lands, have a bunch of L's in play, go get a Crater Hoof Behemoth, or some other big nasty green spell. The the Green Lieutenant. Uh, it's a beast that gives itself and uh, all other creatures you control, plus two, plus two, and trample if you have your commander out. Cost, it's a five drop, so you can just play it as a six drop uh, and just you know go upside some face. Pretty good card. Green something. Yeah, there's a lot of cool, especially like going and getting some of the elf lords and some of the other stuff that you know work like key green creatures in your green, black, blue reanimator deck. There's there, there's a home for green something yeah, in just about any green commander deck. You want it? Uh, grim reminder. Search your library for a non-land card. Reveal it to each opponent who played a card. Oh yeah, this one. It's anybody who's played a card that's the same as that card. Uh, this turn loses six life. Uh, then shuffle the revealed card back into your library. It's not a tutor so much as it is a whole like. Dude, stop playing my deck. Because, um... <laughs> it's kind of funny that, uh... Basically, if you know that you're playing... Like, you and another player are basically playing, like... Almost exactly the same... Deck. 
and you have all the same cards and you're like, I, I hate this guy. This guy has just copied my deck one for one. You can play this. You can be like, we all have, like, I'm in black, but he's playing all the same artifacts that I'm playing. Guess what? Bam, six. Bam, six. Um, you know, you're spending five mana, spend two on your upkeep, and then like keeping two, keeping three open. You can either be like, well, I can counter this, or I can make him lose six mana, or if you've got a repeatable counter spell, I'm looking at you, Forbid, where you are got so much card advantage that you can just be like, ha 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 ha. And just like, oh, this dude's going to play the same deck. This dude's playing all the same cards as me. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to make his day horrible. Um, I like it. It's cute. It's not an actual true tutor spell, but it's cute. Uh, and it does do something if you have a certain card. It's just a little bonus. It's a little like, I thought this was cute while I was looking through. Grim Tutor. All right, this is the last tutor for this video. <sighs> Third best tutor in black. Third best. It goes demonic, vampiric, grim. I know all of you are kind of twinging at that. You lose three life. This is commander. You start with 40. If you're down to 3 life in Commander, you're already dead. If you can't pay 3 life in a Commander game and still be alive, you are already dead. This lets you go get anything you need. There's none of that stupid put it on top of your deck and hope to draw it or rig up a draw effect so you can get it into your hand. Shenanigans. This is just search your deck, get what you need, sorcery speed, so you're not, you know, you can do some shenanigans where you can play it with Flash. You know, Fidel can Ori or uh, Leyline Anticipation, that land that makes you pay, tap it and then pay blue-green extra you can shenanigans to give it flash. Uh, you can quicken it for one blue. So it's uh, a sorcery speed. You know, play it on somebody else's turn to lose three life. Somebody's going to be like, well, if I'm doing that, might as well be playing Diabolic. Sure. Play Diabolic in a Vidalcan Ori. Yeah, that's great. Being able to get any card you need is powerful. Um, you don't work, like, this is the last card in the file, so I have time to really go deep into the tank on this one. Your life total doesn't mean anything in magic. The best lesson I can ever teach you is life totals are meaningless. They are like power ratings after the, after the Saiyan Saga. They're complete BS. The only thing that matters is if you're at zero. And there are cards that even the even you can go even into the negatives and still be alive. Phyrexian Unlife. Uh, you can go you can go way down in the negatives. You can have uh, Platinum Angel. Your opponent could have the demon out that says that you can't lose the game. The game. And, well, they can't win. It, you know, it's a demon says you can't win the game and your opponents can't lose the game. So if I've got the demon out, you can't lose the game. I can't win. If you're at negative 20 and you're like, I need a card that will let me gain about 50 life right now. If you're at negative, if you're, if you're at zero and you want to play a th lose three life, go to negative three and you're playing mono black and you've got devotion to black at like... 10, 15, 20, you can whoop, go get Gray Merchant, good old Gary, and be back in the game. Uh, he's got the demon, says he can't win, you can't lose, guess what, that means you can still win. 
as long as that demon's in play. So, yeah, don't worry about your life tone. Don't worry about paying life. Worry only about when you don't have the ability to pay the life, or if paying the life will cost you the game. It's the only time your life total matters. I guess to uh, put a put a spiritual message on at the end of this one. If you're breathing, you're still alive. If you're still alive, you're still in the game. Don't sweat the stuff that don't cost you your life. Don't sweat the stuff that cost you your game. Just play the game. Sometimes playing it, you're gonna you you're gonna hurt yourself along the way. You're gonna have you're gonna stub your toe getting out of the out of the shower. What are you gonna do? Stop taking showers? No. You want to smell nice because it's a gaming store. You don't want to be stinky Pete. I apologize to anybody whose name is Pete. It just rhymes. No, it doesn't rhyme. It just sounds good. But anyways, like I say, if you're breathing, you're still alive. You can figure out any situation you're in as long as you keep breathing. When you're playing magic, as long as your life total ain't zero, you're still breathing. You're still in the game. So those are... That's the message. This has been uh, Tutors in Commander. Uh, part two. I'll see you again for part three. As always, thank you. Bless you. May the force be with you. Peace.